Hi guys, good morning and welcome to Primus Learning. My name is Primus Veku. It's been a while. Um, I was out a little bit sick uh, with a cold and some cough. So you may hear me uh, from time to time cough out. Um, sorry about that. So this is a special request. Um, I was helping someone uh, get the environment uh, all cleaned up, all tacked up, uh, such that they could, um, you know, do cost optimization and all of that. Um, and I think this is a very, very useful um, video right here. This is a really useful, uh, you know, neat little uh, recording that we're doing for especially AWS solutions architects, those who manage AWS accounts at organizational level, at enterprise level, and DevOps engineers, those who automate stuff in AWS. This right here is for you guys. And so what are we trying to do? We want to use the AWS resource groups service or the AWS resource group um, <clears throat> API to really be able to filter out all resources that have been tagged in our AWS account. So this deals with resources that have been tagged that previously or have had a kind of a single tag. Maybe you've given a name to a resource, maybe you've <coughs> done all of that. So let's say you want to get all the resources in your AWS account that have been tagged, right? All the resources, I mean, this is a very good way to take inventory of what is in, in your accounts. Uh, <clears throat> maybe let's say you want to compare three environments. You want the same things, the same resources to be running in the three environments. You can decide to use the resource groups service, the resource group tagging um, <clears throat> service API uh, to the, the its API and be able you know to get those resources and that's exactly what we'll be doing in this video guys uh, so the very first thing you need to understand is what the resource groups service does the aws resource group service does so this is a neat little service and as you can see here you can create unlimited single region groups in your account use your groups to view group related insights and automate tasks on group resources groups can be based on resource types and tag queries or aws cloud formation stacks so <coughs> we can query our resources using this service and be able to get those resources um, in our AWS accounts, guys. So that's exactly what we'll be doing in this video. So to do this, um, we have some code that we'll go through and then we'll create a Lambda function uh, and explain a little, little bit uh, all what we'll be doing right. So the first um, Lambda function, so this is a Lambda function, we call it the infrastructure list dev. So let's say you want to get the infrastructure list or result the list of resources in your dev account, right? Or in all your AWS accounts, let's just start with a dev account. So what you could do is you could set up this Lambda function right so this is a lambda function and uh, what it does is this you know <clears throat> you have to import uh, the packages that you would use and boto3 is what we're using here uh no we're not using boto3 or this one so we're using uh, csv json and os so what you do is you need to define your lambda handler if you don't define a lambda handler you will not be able to you'll not be able to um run a lambda function and so after that you need to define the resource group so you, you initialize your your aws client and you do that by using boto 3 dot client right and you're defining uh resource groups right here so s3 boto 3 client you want to use s3 as well and then um uh, sts which is uh, kind of assume role uh, stuff so you want to get your aws account and then your current date, so you want to use your date um, function here. <clears throat> and the next thing you want to do is you want to get particular tag. The tag key you want to get is ENV. So you want to get resources that all have the ENV key. And then the tag value you want to get is dev, <clears throat> right? So all resources that are tagged with environment equals to dev is what you want to get. What are the resource types you want to get? You can limit the resource types. 
uh, you could take all the resources in your AWS account or you could limit them. Let's say you want to not have snapshots, uh, EBS snapshots because they are too much, or maybe you don't want to have volumes. You don't want to have certain things, right? Uh, you want to have just the main resources. You just define the resources here. So you see AWS EC2 instance, AWS EC2 subnet, AWS API gateway and so on. These are the resources that you want to get. So you define them here, you see it's a list and that's why we're putting them inside this list here. So after that, <clears throat> you want to create a, a, a query, right? A query that is based on the resource group that we created above there. So the query will go in and get, you know, the group name, will, how will it be named, right? It has to be named according to our account ID and the current date. So when we create the, 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 the group, so you have to create a resource group, right? A, a resource group and that resource group will be named account ID and current date. So you pick the account ID of the account where this will run and the current date of, um, it, you know, of the day's date. So it will run the my account ID and today's date. That's what it will do. And then you are setting up an environment, an S3 bucket where um, once this query is run, it will deposit the output, the file. And it will deposit the output in this format right here. The format is CSV format. And of course, the name will be account ID, current date, and uh, it will end with dot CSV. So that's what you want to do. And then resource query, this is the query you want to get, right? Resource query, the resource type filters, you want to use the resource type filters and you want to use this tag and value that you define up there. And then the resource query, um, so you want to get the resource query here and the response you are getting is the resource, is coming from the resource group. So this is a description that you're just giving the resource group. And of course you want to filter like this according to the type and according to the query, which you defined in the string up here. And then the next things you're doing down here is just getting the ARN of the resource, the resource group, which is defined here. And then you want to grab all the resources that, as you've listed up in your thing up there. And this is how you do that, right? You want to do a kind of uh, a loop through to get all the resources. But normally it gets the first 50 results for you and then it loops through, gets the next, just like that. That's how it would do. After it loops through all the resources, it would then uh, break even, right? So you want to list all your resources in your file. And then the next thing is just to write them to, um, to a CSV file that is then uploaded to S3, you see, right? See, the, the, the last part here is uploading it to S3 and you're uploading it um, with a success message after uploading. So this is what this piece of code does. So the first thing you want to do then is you want to um, have this code. I'll share it with you uh, at the end of the, this video at the description section of the video so that you guys uh, can try it out in your account. This is very useful, very, very useful, guys. You discover that this is very handy in your AWS environment if you are in that space. All right, so let's copy this code. One, you can actually deploy this code as a CI process, right? So that um, you just run it here or you merge it to your Git environment and it automatically uh, deploys it or updates the code in your AWS uh, Lambda function. But we are not doing that right now. We'll just go in manually and create a Lambda function in our AWS account. So let's go create a Lambda function. Let's go to Lambda. So the service we want to create here is Lambda function. We're going to Lambda. And remember, Lambda function is just basically um, um, a function that, you know, that helps you, um, it's it's basically serverless computing, right? You're able to use it to call small, small services that you want to run, uh, like this one, it will run for a couple of seconds. Um, yeah, this is, this is basically what Lambda function does for you. So you can see their description here. Let's create a Lambda function. We want to author the Lambda function from scratch. We want to give it a name, export dash AWS, resources that's the name we want to give export AWS resources uh, that's the lambda function let's use uh, python because the code we wrote is python so let's use python 9 3.9 sorry so after that we we'll use um we we'll use 
a, a role, the role, it will create a role for us. We want to use that role, we'll edit that role after. So you see, it will create the roles, the role that we need to run a Lambda, to execute a Lambda, but we'll add permissions to that role later. So take note of that part. It's very important, else your Lambda function will fail. All right, so let's create our Lambda function. So it's in process. All right, a Lambda function has successfully created. Now let's um, upload the code inside. You remember we copied the code from our VS code. Now let's paste it here and deploy. So we have to deploy this to replace the, um, the previous one that was there. And then to test this out, of course, you need to just do this, uh, just create an event here, just call it test and save. All right, we've saved. So if you run this now, if you execute this now, it will fail. It will fail because of permission issues. So we don't want to do that. Um, we want to go to the 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 to the role that was created. Remember the role I told you will be created. So the role is created, and the role name. Uh, let's see the role name. So the role name should be called, let's go to permissions here. This is the role name, export AWS resources role, and then AWS just adds this. So let's go to this role in IAM and add more permissions. So we want to add the tagging permissions. You want to add permissions so that that role is able to write to S3, so that this Lambda function is able to write to S3 using that role, assuming that role, right? So that Lambda function is using that role to do its magic. So you can come here. To that role you see this is a role in IAM so you need to understand what IAM is that's how you grant permissions to yourself you see the execution role we currently have so let's just add some permissions to this uh, role right here so we want to add a policy and the policy you would want to add would be uh, resource tagging resource tagging so you see resource group tagging editor full access so i want to grant this full access to that role the next thing i want to do is i want to add s3 s3 full access so that it's able to it's able to save stuff in s3 right so i'm adding amazon s3 full access so add this and add permissions so it's attaching permissions to the role now you see we have amazon s3 full access resource group and tag editor full access, AWS Lambda function um, uh, access. All right, now, remember you need to have a bucket. Remember I said there is a bucket that was created. So you need to have this bucket. Uh, mine is named Primus Learning AWS Resources. So you have to have this bucket and you have to have um, this folder inside that bucket. My folder is called export AWS resources. So inside this folder, it will have a file account. The, uh, the file will be named account ID current date dot CSV. So let's go into that S3 bucket to make sure that uh, it's existing, right? So I want to go into S3. Let's just search for S3 here. Make sure that bucket is existing. And this is our bucket. The bucket is named AWS, uh, Primus Learning AWS Resources. And then I said you should create a folder inside. So this is the folder that I created inside this one, export AWS resources. You see there is currently no file in here. So there is currently no resource that has been exported. Now, what you could do therefore is let's go back to the Lambda function and execute that Lambda function. So when we execute the Lambda function, um, if it's working well, if everything looks good, it should be able to create a resource group for us and do its magic. So let's test this function out. So the, the function is executing and the function ha has executed and it has an error. So we'll try to figure out what that error is. And I think I know what this error is. So it looks like it timed out because of the duration. So what you want to do is go to configuration and go to general here. So you want to go to general 
and exit this time. So it times out after three seconds, but the, the function wants to run for more than three seconds. So you go there and edit this and just give it one, just give it one minute here, one minute, three seconds. Just leave it like that and save. Then let's go back and execute this function. So you go back to your code and execute this function. Now it tells you cannot create the resource group because it already exists. Because um, the first time it created it and uh, you see it says create resource group because it already exists. The first time we ran the function, it created it, but it could not complete the process because of the fact that um, the, time, the time was short. Now let's go to the AWS resource group service. So if we refresh this, you, I think, you see it uploaded a file here. It uploaded a file here already. And let's go to let's go to the AWS resource group service. So if we go, uh, let's duplicate this page actually. So let's do it here. Uh, and let's do. Let's go to the resource group service. Resource groups and tag editor. All right. So you see that a resource group was created. You see, this is a resource group. If you open up this resource group, you will see the resources that we tag. Remember, these are the resources that we listed in our Lambda function. We wanted to get them. And we wanted to get which tag value ENV dev. So wanted to get the tag value uh, uh, ENV dev. That's what we wanted to get. And you see that it returns just one resource. It returns just one easy to instance, which means there is just one resource in our AWS account which has been tagged with uh, the with with the tag ENV equals to dev, whose tag is ENV equals to dev. That's the only thing that's been tagged that way. Just one resource. All right. So let's go to S3. Remember, the resource is already here in S3, uploaded in S3. So let's go here and download this resource to make sure that's all we, we get. So if we download this resource, it downloads it in, in here. Let's open that up. So this is the CSV file. So it's opening it up and that's it, you see? This is the resource. This is the resource name. This is the resource, the resource ARN, the region where that resource is, the environment, and dev. That's it. You see, it downloaded the resource as was expected. Now, let's go back to this place and delete this one. Let's delete this resource because we want to run the file again so that it runs successfully without that error that we got, right? So we've deleted. Go back, execute this Lambda function. And voila, the Lambda function is successful. Our Lambda so function has completely, um, you know, been successful. Let's go back here. You refresh again, you see a resource group that is created. So if you refresh here, you see that we have a new resource group and that's it. You see the account ID for this account and then for this account, and then it gives the date, the date.csv. Remember, that's how we said it would, it would name the service. And so you already have all the services in your AWS account that have been tagged with this. Now, let's say in your environment, your services have not been tagged. What would you do? Your services have not been tagged, and you, you really want to grab all the services that are tagged that way. So it means you need to do something, right? You need to do something. And so we have another script. So after this first part, we have another script. So we finished with this one. There is another script that we have, we'll share with you after this. And this script right here, it just is awesome. It will go in and tag all the AWS resources in your AWS environment the way you want it to tag them. So 
the key <clears throat> so the, the only thing we are using is the resource group api uh, tagging api as well that's 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 what we are using so there's the resource group api tagging i want to use and then <clears throat> uh, what we'll do is um we'll uh, define our resources um, here, if they are not already tagged, right? This is what we want to do here. We want to define the resources if they are not yet tagged. And the resources we want to define should have the key environment, uh, uh, the key ENV, right? Like environment, or you could put it in full or whatever. You could decide to put many tags here. It doesn't matter. You could decide to tag it as many tags as you want, but you have to make it to be in this format. So you could say all your resources should be tagged with created by this. Um, so it will be cre uh, key environment created uh, created by, if you wanted to do it, that way, created by, and then the value will be equals to this. So you will just copy this. For instance, if you want to create a second tag, you just copy this, put a comma here and add this <clears throat> and put the the the, the key and put the value put the key put the value just like that and you can tag your resources as you want guys you can tag it as you want and so the rest of the code here is just doing a loop through um you know it will go through pagination it will go through all all the resources look if they have the tags that you want up there if they don't have the tags that you want if they don't have the tags that you've defined that you want the env equals to dev please go ahead and tag it this is what this 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 thing will go in and do right so this is a formidable uh, script that will go in and tag all the resources in your aws environment with um env <clears throat> so we'll execute this script you see once it's done that it has to add the res uh, the tag that and once it adds it it needs to bring our tax added to resources and we see the output right so that is what the script will go in there and do it's a simple script but very powerful to tag your aws environment and so we'll have to run this script right here yeah i think we have all it we have the access that we need i think the role that we're using here so let's check that role aws sts mm, get Color identity. Let's see what uh, uh, user primos. All right, I think I have I have the permissions, the required permissions to run the script. So you can give yourself uh, admin permissions, right, by doing AWS configure uh, the user that you created. Give that user an admin uh, admin rights, admin permissions, and just and just uh, do AWS configure AWS. Um, and it will pass the values, the key, the the secret access key and the and the access key to this uh, CLI, and you are able to run the, this code right from here. So this is the code we want to run. All right. So I want to do since it's a Python code, you just do Python, just call it Python, and then you pass the resource name, which is tag something right so you want to run uh, run a python script so you have to have python installed in your machine uh, if you want to run this code right so let's run that and so this script right here is going over it's looping through you see what it's done it's looped through all the resources and it's added tag to those resources you see tags added to resource this so there are some instances that it's tagged now Stack added to resource this, stack added to resource this. It stacked some volumes and some things inside our AWS account, guys. This is really neat. Now, if you go back, if we go back here and delete the last, the, uh, the earliest one that we did, right? So we did this one already. Let's delete this one. So if you rerun our script, now that it stacked some resources with ENV equals to dev, so I think it added some resources um in ec2 ec2 so if you go to ec2 you see some volumes have been tagged all the resources that are here have been tagged so if you go into ec2 those resources that did not have tags would now have tags with env equals to dev and other tags that were there will still be maintained that's the thing you have to understand if there were other tags those tags will be maintained so at first we had just one right one tag but now just one one 
uh, EC2 instance with the tag ENV equals to dev. But now we should be having this one, ENV equals to dev. And this one should have same, ENV equals to dev, right? So it's gone out and tagged your resources and the volumes that are attached to these resources as well have been tagged, right? I think there was an EBS volume that was tagged as well. You can figure that out. <clears throat> now let's go back to our Lambda function. So if you go back to your Lambda function and execute this Lambda function again, so if we execute this Lambda function again, we should be able to get all these resources that have been tagged below here. We should be able to get them now. All right, so let's go to the Lambda function and execute. Successful, our execution was successful. And so let's go back to our um, S3 environment. So there should be a new file that has been, it will of course replace this old one. You see the time, it just executed now, um, 13, 913, 913. So it updated this script. So if you download this script now, you should be able to see new um, resources that have been added. So let's open this up. You see this is the CSV file. And let's open that up. Voila, this is it. You can see three more resources have been added. All the EC2 instances have been added and, and have been returned in our code, right? You see all of them have been tagged this way, guys. So this is how you can tag your AWS resources in your AWS environment and really um, manage your resources in AWS. Now you can begin to manage your AWS resources with uh, ease, right? <clears throat> you can even use those tags for, for billing purposes. Maybe you wanted to add billing information. You wanted to query um, and, and see what resources are running, what resources are built. You could use that for cost optimization and for anything. There's a whole lot of things that you could your resources have been correctly tagged in your AWS environment, or you could use it to standardize your tagging uh, strategy in your environment, right? This is a really neat tool that you would use um, for that purpose. So guys, uh, this is where this video comes to an end. Uh, if you find this video uh, helpful and useful, please give us a thumbs up there and uh, leave us a comment. Let us, let, let us know how you feel about our videos. And of course, um, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video to those who need it. All right. Uh, this has been Primus Veku from Primus Learning. Um, see you again in our next video. Bye-bye.